Hey guys, Mary here from The Leather Beast. If you don't know me, uh, I am the founder of Leather Beast and the Facebook group, The Leather Tamers, where we talk all things leather, um, specifically how to get started with leather work, what the best methods are, the best kind of tools and techniques, um, and also how to sell your leather work. But today I'm focusing more on the making part, right? So this is day three in the five day series leading up to the doors opening for mastering traditional leather working basics that's my course it opens on friday this friday um, and it's great for the beginner who really wants to learn the uh techniques that i learned from a master leather worker straight out of hermes and um yeah it's an awesome course we'll talk more about that later but today i'm talking about the three mistakes these rookie mistakes that I want to know if you're making. So I want to know if you've ever made a mistake. Of course, we've all made mistakes, but have you ever made a serious leather mistake? I definitely have. I've made many, um, but I want to know what yours are. So drop them in the comments and um, we'll come back to that in a second. Um, so I'm talking to you today about the things that you might be doing wrong in your leather work. Or if you haven't started yet and you want to get started, these are things to really watch out for and don't fall into these traps. Um, there's a lot of uh, leather working advice out there that might have led you astray in the past, led you to get not so great results, uh, maybe not the results that you were looking for. So we're going to talk about some of these uh, mistakes. And before we dive into today's uh, content, I just want to say to um, click the link in the description, head to leatherbeast.com and sign up for the wait list. When you do that, you will get the information about how to save $100 off of the price of enrollment in the course. So um, if you're at all interested, you might as well sign up for the wait list just so you have that info and you can take advantage of those savings that I'm only giving to the VIP wait list. Mistake number one. Let's get right into it. Um, this is the first mistake that uh, beginner leather workers make. They learn tricks to avoid getting the right tools. So I can't tell you how many leather videos I've watched where people are trying to cut corners by not getting the right tools. This is the biggest mistake that you can make because it's going to show up in your finished product. Um, the biggest way I see people doing this is when they buy the pre-assembled toolkits, whether that's on Amazon or from some other retailer. But I always feel kind of bad for these people because I hear so many bad reviews about these toolkits, whether it's in Facebook groups or on Amazon reviews, where people will report back and say, I just use the stitching chisels that were in this kit for the very first time and one of the, the points is already bent. Um, generally, these toolkits are very low quality tools, um, which is why the kits are usually pretty affordable. And, um, and there's also, they're also usually full of a lot of things that you don't really need, or maybe you already have, or maybe some things that you can get other places cheaper. So generally, I find that that is not a good route to go for your tools. Um, there's also people who are using other non-specific leather, um, non-specific tools to use as leather working tools. So for instance, the people who use um, a power drill to drill their holes. Sure, this can work, but you're not going to get those really beautiful, perfectly slanted stitches that you see in a lot of the, uh, the most refined and polished traditional leather work. If that's not something that you are striving for, then by all means. But if you are someone who is looking for that really sleek, polished, refined leather work, the kind of leather work that um, you can resell at a higher price point, the kind of leather work where, um, you know, people are going to be impressed by it, customers are going to notice the attention to detail. It's those little things like those slanted stitches that you really want to be focusing a lot of your attention on. Um, so if you're someone who's looking for that sleek and polished 
leather work instead of buying that toolkit from Amazon, maybe take what you would have spent on the entire kit and purchase a really nice set of stitching chisels um, because these are going to really give you the evenly spaced and slanted stitches that you're looking for. And like I said, there's only a few tools that you need in your leather toolkit, but they need to be the proper leather tools for you to get the results. Um, Okay, so that is that is tools. Uh, let me just go over to the Instagram feed here and see if anybody is talking about the mistakes. Maybe you're too embarrassed to talk about your mistakes. That's okay. I'll tell you one of mine. I um, I was working on a, a piece of natural veg tanned leather. I was working on this really um, nice bag. I can't remember who I was making it for, whether it was a customer. Um, but I pulled out a rag to do my edge, edge burnishing and I didn't notice that it had some black residue on it, like just a tiny bit. And I was getting like black scuff marks all over the edges. So I had to fix that somehow, but that was a big mistake. And that's when I realized, all right, I need to keep like two separate sets of rags, you know, only using the used rags on the black leather. Anytime I'm using natural veg tan leather, just get like a brand new rag or something that's very clean. So that was one of mine. Um, Owl and Foxcraft says, five identical burnishers. Yeah, you can collect those, right? <laughs> I have a couple of those myself. Uh, and even with the burnishers too, I keep one, I keep two sets, one for black leather and a second clean set for the nude natural veg tan leather. Um, okay, let's move on to mistake number two. Mistake number two is using the wrong type of leather for your project. So when you first get started with anything you're excited right you're excited to dive in you're excited just to get started um, and you really want to get your hands especially if it's a leather project you really just want to get your hands on that leather and so you're excited to buy the leather so you just go for it you go and you maybe you go in person and you just pick something out that you like that feels good or you go online to you know tandy or springfield or maverick or somewhere else and uh you just impulse buy right you buy something without knowing much about it or what you'll use it for in the future um, or if it's the right type of leather for a certain project that you're thinking about and then you get it and you decide that it's not quite right for your project um, maybe it's too heavy or you know it's too light or maybe it's really too rigid it won't bend right or it's too flimsy whatever it is it's not quite right but you try and use it anyways right because you don't want to waste it leather can be expensive it's a big purchase it's like trying to jam like a square peg in a circle right you're just like i'm gonna make this work i've done that before with leather with it was way too heavy i'm trying to sew through two or three layers it's super heavy my thread's breaking duh it's because the leather is not right for what you're trying to do right so you really need to know two things before you purchase your leather you need to know um what you're making and you need to know what kind of leather would be best for that thing so there's a lot of different factors you know it's the type of leather is a chrome tanned or a veg tanned or a retan or an oil tan going to be best for your project is a four ounce le weighted leather versus a nine ounce going to be better you know lighter or heavier is a soft glovey soft leather, uh, like that buttery sort of beautiful leather, is that going to work best? Or does your project require like a firmer leather that has a firmer hand to it? So these are things that you need to know about the leather that you're looking at and what is going to be best for your project. So we talk about all of that in Mastering Traditional Leatherworking Basics because I do find that that is the thing that really can be overwhelming when you're a beginner. There's so many different types of leather out there. So if you don't know sort of the basics uh, and some of those guidelines to go by, it can be really hard and sort of daunting. 
Um, if you're just joining me now, I just saw a couple new people pop in on the Instagram feed. Um, I just want to uh, mention again the link in the description, or you can head to leatherbeast.com and sign up for the wait list. That wait list is going to be closing probably Thursday. So if you're interested and you want more information about the course and you want to be on that VIP early bird list and learn how to save $100 off of the enrollment price, just make sure you sign up um, there at leatherbeast.com. Okay, let's move on. Uh, finally, mistake number three is leaving out the setup steps that are going to give you the results that you want. So, you know, you have your size, your saddle stitching, that is how you are assembling your leather goods, but there's many steps before you even get to that part that really set you up for either success or failure in your final result. It's like one of my students said this before. She said, I realized after your course that every step is setting you up for the next step. And if you mess up that first step, that mistake is going to carry through and really, um, really point to what your final result is going to be. If it's going to be uh, really good work, really polished and refined and reflective of your craftsmanship, or if it's going to look like you made a mistake in the very beginning and you didn't correct it. So I feel like that's really key. Um, so, so, right. So when you leave out the steps, you sidestep those proven methods that um, have been shown to work. They're simple methods. Um, and instead, I see people sort of overcomplicating things a little bit, and that's where they get into trouble. So whether it's a shortcut to save you on time, or you just don't know how to do things like creating your stitching guidelines and using the stitching chisels in a way that gives you a very even straight line of stitching or whether that's waxing and your thread and using the proper needle size these things really matter um, or whether you're using the right stitching chisels that are going to give you that perfect slanted stitch so when you don't do these things up front that are easy to do and instead um, overcomplicate things with gadgets and stuff and maybe you're just not even sure how to do these things or that these are steps in the leather making process, um, you're not going to get that polished and refined um, results. You're not going to get that wow factor that you really want. And I want you to get that wow factor because that's what we're all looking for, right? We're looking for the best work that we can create. So if you've been making any of these mistakes, don't worry, don't feel bad. Like I said before, there's a lot of leather advice out there that comes from people taking shortcuts, from people DIYing. I love a good DIY myself, but if you're someone who wants to learn um, the methods, methods that I learned from a master leather worker, these methods that have been in use for 100, 200 years. I'm not sure how long Hermes has been around, but I think it's over 200 years. Um, if you want to learn these methods and really create that refined and polished leather work, um, then you need to be in mastering traditional leatherworking basics. And I'd love to show you um, everything that I learned there when I took that course from the master leather worker. Um, you'll get the uncomplicated, simple um, process. You'll learn about tools, you'll learn about leather, and by the end of it, you'll be able to um, make any basic traditional leather good, and it's going to look amazing every time because you'll have all of the steps. Um, I've packed everything that I know into the course about how to create that refined leather work and um, how to avoid making a lot of these mistakes. And like I said before, I'm kicking open the doors to the program this week on Friday for the VIP waitlist. Um, and also to kick things off, I am doing a free live masterclass on Friday. It'll be Friday morning, um, probably around 10, I'm not sure, between 10 and 12, I'll let you know. Um, but if you're an aspiring leather worker, this would be a great way for you to get some um, basic information. Um, a lot of the things that I'm going to be sharing in that free workshop 
um, really uh, mirrors what is in the paid course. So if you've been curious about mastering traditional leatherworking basics, what's in it, and you want to learn more about it and what it takes to get those polished results, then definitely check out the free masterclass that I'm doing on Friday. I'm going to do it on Facebook and probably on Instagram as well. So there's no need to sign up. You don't need to sign up for anything. You should sign up for the wait list though um, so that I can email you. That's the only thing I need to have your email so I can send you um, the link for um, the early bird pricing on the course. So that's it, you guys. Tomorrow I'll be back here again for day four of the live stream. And what am I talking about? I'm talking about... Oh, I'm talking about what happens when you learn the three secrets, these very simple things to making quality leather work and how this can really positively affect your results. Three things, and that's what I'm going to be talking about tomorrow. Um, thanks, you guys. Thanks for watching, and I will see you tomorrow. Have a great Wednesday. Bye. Bye.